All right, everybody, Jeremy Salt here with Banana Hobbies. And what we got is the last video of hopefully this, uh, this whole three-part segment on how to set up your B1 Lancer with the multiple different modes. Um, again, we've already talked about, real quick, we've talked about the stock setup with the gyro on. We've talked about the stock setup with the gyro off. And now this last is the ad advanced setup um, or what is going to be known as the bypass of the aileron, elevator, and rudder on the control board in this airplane. Um, something that you should know about the airplane is that when you do this bypass option, what it does is it allows for more travel option on your aileron, your elevator, and your rudder. And the reason why it does that is because like we've talked about in the off mode and the on mode within the internal controller and gyro, uh, the controller limits travel to prevent servos from either overheating or over torquing or over traveling. Um, so in this advanced option, you're going to gain more uh, amount of travel. And so you've got to watch out for a few things. And that's what I'm going to hopefully uh, help you out with. And so, that being said, some of the things that you're going to actually need to do this is you're going to need two Y cables that are at least eight inches long. And then you're going to need at least one extension, same amount of about eight inches. The other thing that you're going to need is your receiver. You can use either an AS3X type receiver like such. You can use a regular, gyre, or regular receiver. You can use uh, any kind of other receivers out there that have gyros in there. You can also use uh, inline uh, gyros also, similar to the Cortex Pro, the Hobby Eagle A3 series, the Pulsar, um, any of those type of gyros you should be able to use. And so you're just gonna end up putting them in line. So with that being said, um, there's just a couple of things that you just got to make sure you know. I'm going to tell you what my rates are, and uh, we're going to show you how to do this. And so I'm going to adjust the camera so that you can get a close-up view of how to change this out. Um, and uh, let's see, the biggest thing really to know is that in the advanced mode, it's designed so that the advanced pilot can do the bypassing, and then the other setups. The stock gyro on and the stock off setup, those are designed for just the basic pilot, uh, the intermediate pilot to be able to get the airplane in the air. So I like the personal feel of the advanced setup. And with that being said, we're going we're gonna to do this. So what I've done is I've moved the camera closer so you can actually see everything on here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to undo the, uh, the gyro controller. Um, from the airplane. This actually has uh, a schematic inside of the actual uh, manual that actually explains which servos wire connections are what. And uh, so you should know exactly which ones you're actually going to disconnect. Um, be very careful when you pull this out. That way you end up not pulling out any of the extra stuff that uh, you don't want to have to try and figure out where it goes back into. Um, it's easier to just let things kind of sit when you need to. Um, but that being said, is this is what we're gonna do. So there you go. So you're gonna undo your, you're gonna pull your gyro and your controller out a little bit, okay? What you're gonna do is you're gonna try and flip it over to get a little bit of room so you can see what's going on. Uh, in one of the earlier videos, I, ex I tried to explain uh, that I did not set up the thrust reversers, but this wire right here, this yellow wire, you can route that to a separate channel and that is your thrust reverser. But what I uh, try to do is I get a marker and uh, just so if I ever need to put something back, um, I always try and mark the control board with some marker on there. And then the, the things that I put, I'm gonna pull out, I try and highlight them to the side that they would end up being. 
if that makes any sense. So that way I know that if I pull out uh, a landing gear for this side, I know that it goes back to that side type of thing. So um, ailerons. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with ailerons. So we're going to look right here. And this first one on this back row says aileron. Okay. So I'm going to mark it blue just so I have aileron in there. Okay. Nice and easy. I'm going to get my Y cable. This Y cable is going to be the joining point between both sides of the aileron. Okay. So I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to find the other side, which says aileron. Okay, and it is also right there. So I'm being careful not to pull anything else out. And so it, I'm going to run also to try to get it out of the same area so that everything looks all nice and organized. And so we got the other aileron right there. Make sure your polarities are correct. And then we're going to set it aside. Now, we're going to go with the rudder, and so we already marked a blue rudder, so the rudder is the back one. We're going to connect that to our Y cable, and then up here on the front, you've got one that says wheel, and it is the yellow, yellow, more yellow, and then a black. And so that is your nose wheel steering, so that is also going to go with your rudder. Okay, then we're going to set that aside. Now the last thing is an extension. And the extension is going to go to the elevator, and the elevator is the last one on the opposite side. Okay, we're going to grab that elevator, plug it into the extension, and we're going to set it aside. So now what you want to do is you want to kind of get your wires pushed kind of back down. And then you're going to route these wires up and follow where your ESC power wires go in. And so I'm going to go and I'm going to push it right up in here. There should be one. Okay. Two. And three. Okay. All right. And so while I'm in here, like I said, I'm going to grab that throttle wire and I'm going to peel it back a little bit and I'm going to route it up there also and we're going to tap that into the receiver okay all right so now that those are kind of down there you can kind of push the wires down and then I'm going to reach in through the bay which I somehow still have the battery um, Battery still in the airplane too. <laughs> and I'm gonna start grabbing these wires and just pulling them in just a little bit further out. And so we can let those sit right there. Okay, so I'm gonna just put this gyro in here temporarily. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the airplane over and I'm gonna show you the other side. And and uh actually nope, I'm gonna do this. So on this side here. You're not going to be needing your aileron, your elevator, and your rudder wires. Okay. Try and get this so you can see. But on here, you've got an A, an E, and an R. And you can disconnect them because you're not going to need them anymore because you're bypassing the controller. A, E, and R. They are the first three on the outside if you're looking at it down like this it'll be the right hand side and so again right back there you got an ae and an r and we're just going to pull those through when we do that so 
I'm going to stop the camera real quick and I get a different angle so we can see inside the battery bay. <clears throat> All right, so we're back now. So again, what we got here is we got our receiver right there. If you remember, I, I just unplugged the rudder, the elevator, and the aileron and the elevator. So aileron, elevator, and rudder. So now they can be separated from your receiver. Now, depending on what you are trying to accomplish, um, whether you're using like a Hobby Eagle gyro, which I like these Hobby Eagle gyros, um, or you're gonna use just an AS3X, will depend on whether or not you're going to just plug to your receiver with AS3X or if you're going to plug into your controller. And so um, so what I need what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, pull the wires, but I'm going to look underneath and verify where they go. Another thing that you can do is you can get a servo checker to verify. And I think I might just quickly just jiggle and make sure where we got going on and so this one is the ailerons and so I'm going to plug that into my gyro and then I'm going to plug my gyro into my receiver okay and this one Is elevator and so it's going to go into the gyro and then the elevator is going to go elevator to my receiver and this one has to be the rudder so we're going to make sure we look still just to make sure we are doing what we should be doing okay and then plug in the rudder into the receiver. Okay, so now I've got a gyro within, and then I've got my uh, receiver directly in there too. So again, like I said, the other thing I was doing was I needed to figure out a throttle channel, but uh, I only have a seven channel receiver right now. But what you would do with this uh, receiver is you would, or sorry, connection is you'd stick it into the next channel or whatever channel you want, plug it into the actual signal, and then put that onto a either a slider switch or a switch, whatever switch you want for reverse. You plug that in, and that should automatically work. And so everything should already be preset on there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, plug in the airplane now. I'm going to set this gyro down in here so it's not jiggling around like crazy. And then uh, I'm going to verify that we got everything into the right uh, right position. So I'm just going to set a battery in here. Again, this is not the right size battery, but it is a battery that will work. We're plugging it in. Now you're not going to see any of those surface movements unless your gyro that you put in is going to be there. We've got our ailerons, we've got our elevator, and we have our rudder. And so everything works like it should. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, reset the camera so you can see everything for setup, and we'll be right back. All right, so we got the camera set back there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to organize my wires. I don't want to have to show you that, but I, all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all the extra wiring that I have up here, and I'm going to pull it back towards the controller, and I'm going to clean it up in there, and then I'm going to bolt the controller back down. Even though there's no gyro needed in there, I just want to make sure it's secured. And then I'm going to uh, arrange my gyro and my receiver in the battery bay to the furthest aft that I can get it, so that we can keep the battery as far aft as you can get it. And so that's kind of important. So make sure you don't clutter the back of the battery bay so that you cannot get a further aft CG that you need uh, for this airplane. And so that being said, 
quick turnaround and then we'll get back and we'll show you how to set up the rest of the setting. So I have now got the gyro, or sorry, the controller bolted back in. And what I've got, uh, so it's all squared away. All my wires are tucked in nice. You want to make sure that you don't have any real major pressure pulling on these wires. You want to make sure that they are good to go so they're not going to ever fall out in any kind of high G turning, bumping around, dropping, falling, landing, crashing, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so I've got the gyro. It's going to be sitting in here. All of my wires are going to be tucked in nice. And we're going to get that uh, here in just a little bit. Um, I need to get some double-sided tape for there. But we can at least show the setup of the airplane now that we have bypassed the uh, controller. And so that's what we're going to do right now is I'm going to connect this up. And we're going to show you the proper settings for this airplane. Okay. All right, so we're checking our surfaces, everything works. We're gonna extend out the wings. Always make sure that after you do this modification or bypassing, that every one of your surfaces works as advertised, okay? You got everything working. That way you make sure that you didn't accidentally pull something out when you do that, okay? All right, so. Okay, so this is what you will want for your elevator neutral for a starting point, depending on where you place your battery and your CG. Your elevator low rate should sit at about 12.9 millimeters or 13 millimeters. And your elevator high rate should be as much as possible that you can obtain. That'll help you with your wings uh, extension and then also for your uh, wings being retracted is what you want for as much as you can get. You wanna just be able to lift that nose as much as you can. The elevator uh, servo location for the arm, this is the ideal area. Again, it may not be perfect for what you want, but that's what I like. All right, everybody. So I've got a spectrum transmitter uh, and what I've got going on in here is that the uh, surfaces I like to have flight modes. I like to have them controlled by the flaps. And so whenever I end up uh, doing a maiden flight, what I do is I, I get up in the air, I bring the landing gear up, I fly and I trim the airplane. And then I drop half flaps and then I trim the airplane again. And then I go full flaps gear down again and then I trim the airplane for a third time. And so that's how I use flight modes or F modes. And it's all based upon the trims on there. And so what I recommend is that you guys set up flight modes for this airplane. That way you can fine tune it with the variable geometry wings. Um, you're going to want to be able to fine tune the airplane, whether the wings are out, whether the wings are flat with flaps. And lastly, you're going to also want to add an F mode set up for your elevator, for your wings being wings swept back. And so I have that switch also on there for a uh flight mode and so if you watch my airplane what you're going to see is that when my wings are out the airplane's elevator is trimmed basically set so that when the wings are out the airplane doesn't need as much nose up and so it'll actually nose down a little bit okay now when the wings go back you will see that the elevator then also goes nose up pretty good and the reason why is to compensate for the nose becoming heavy when the wings go back and so if you watch this you'll see what i'm talking about so go ahead and watch the elevator okay you ready so here we're going to go wings swept or sorry wings extended so when the wings were extended the airplane's elevator surface went more neutral and so now that it's neutral the airplane is is less nose heavy okay if that makes any sense and so then with the airplane you're flying it around and then all of a sudden you're going to go wing sweep. Well, now you're going to hit your wing sweep. Your elevator is going to go up. The airplane is going to climb a little bit at first. So plan that when you do your wing sweep, you're going to get a climb. So give it just a little bit of nose down as you hit wing sweep to counter the climb. And then once it counters that climb, the airplane, you should just be able to trim it out and get what you need out of it. 
and then have fun with it that way. So, have again, flight mode set up for flaps up, half, down, and wing swept. So I've got the ability to trim the airplane in all of those modes. Um, that being said, the airplane should be ready to fly right now. And so always, always, always check and make sure that whenever you do anything with a gyro, or if you're running a gyro, always check your orientations of pitch, roll, and yaw, and make sure that they're actually compensating correctly. Um, we all get complacent when we do stuff. That's something to check every time. If you do, you will always have an airplane good to go as long as you're looking at it right. Um, so that's it for the airplane. Remember, it flies on a 6S 5000 pack. Rates, um, I sent the rates are inside there. Um, it's a great airplane. You just got to be able to adjust it and have some fun with it as, you, as these event, advanced pilots want. I've enjoyed it. You can fly this airplane at a foot down the runway and it's super stable if you do it right. And so that's how we do it. I'll do what I can to answer your questions as you have them with this airplane. Um, but again, the airplane is very simple. Don't let it discourage you. And then just always, always, always do what you need to do if you're going to be using the stock setup with the gyro or the stock gyro, uh, stock setup with the gyro off. You got to make sure you do certain things because you're unable to do trim, um, which is just different. So I like this advanced option because you can use Expo, you can trim, you can sub trim, you can use rates, you can fine tune it to your best of your own liking. So hopefully this setup helped you out. And again, thanks for watching. And again, I'm Jeremy from Banana Hobbies. And until next time, have fun.